Hi there, me again. So now we're going to do S is for support. Okay. So there's many ways you can get support through this rehab recovery journey that is your stroke. Some of them are more effective than others, and some are more effective than others. So first off, you're going to have family and friends. Right? They're going to be your primary link of support. Uh, after family and friends, you're going to have your clinical team, uh, your neurologist, your physiotherapist, speech and language pathologist, occupational therapist, um, uh, social worker, psychiatrist, psychologist, someone to help you work through the whole mental process of I've had a stroke. You've got your coworkers, uh, which could be included in friends and family or could be included just as coworkers. Uh, you then have support groups. Um, because, as I've indicated many times before, your stroke is a very isolating thing. And unless you've honestly had a stroke, you legitimately have no idea what that person is going through. Right? Um, you may think you do. Trust me, you don't. I say this for a couple of reasons. One, the last job I had in mental health was working with acquired brain injury clients. Um, a stroke is a brain injury. Right? Um, in fact, many of the, the rehabilitation things you do for a brain injury, you do for stroke. Um, I worked in mental health. I was educated on how the brain works and how it doesn't work. I worked with clients that had brain injuries, some of them fairly significant and traumatic, like being ejected through a windshield of a car and then hitting a telephone pole with your head. Um, some of it, you know not so structurally damaging. I worked with patients or clients in their own home and a few in a hospital setting. So I had the experience working with brain injury and brain injury issues before. Uh, I had the educational experience of working and learning about how the brain works and rehab philosophies for, for brain injury, right? Um, so I was fairly knowledgeable about what can happen to a person because the brain tried to kill them. It's scary. And lastly, I got to watch my grandmother go through the throes of a stroke. Um, kind of thought I knew what that would be like. Yeah, no. <laughs> For all the education I had, the insight I had, the experience I had, um, yeah, no. I, I, I will now honestly say I legitimately had no real idea um, what it would be like to go through a brain injury myself. And I've had to have conversations with family members and caregivers about brain injury. Like, hey, the reason why this is happening is this. I, I could relate and explain what was kind of going on. Um, so you had a stroke? You have no idea. And that's just where that ends. Um, you can attempt to tell me you know what I'm going through, and all I'm going to hear is gibberish. Just, just noise. Because unless you can show me you've had a stroke, yeah, that's what I have to say about you know what I'm going through. <laughs> um, sorry, encountered someone else recently that tried to tell me they know what I'm going through and they haven't had a stroke. Um, so you then have... Um, Support groups, like actual support groups of people that have had stroke. Now, that could be in person or online. So, on Facebook, I'm a member of Stroke Talk. I'm a member of uh, the Young Stroke Survivors uh, Coffee, the, the Stroke Coffee House. So, go on your Facebooks and type in Stroke Survivor or Stroke Support. Um, generally, the groups are closed. You'll have to answer a few questions. Um, and then they'll let you into the group. Now then, you have groups that actually meet in person. Sadly, there's only really two groups in my area, in my city. Uh, one is the first Thursday of every month, and that's specifically for stroke um, survivors. Uh, and then there is one, I believe, that is weekly for people that have acquired or traumatic brain injury. 
So, if you live in a larger area, so I, I'm in Aurelia, Ontario. Um, if you happen to be, say, in Toronto, or in Cincinnati, or in London, Ontario, or even London, United Kingdom, because you are in a larger population dense area, there may be other in-person in support groups. Um, so the group that the city I'm in is run through the March of Dimes. So some of them might be run through the March of Dimes, some of them might be run through the United Way, some might be run through Salvation Army, they might be run through the Heart, Heart and Stroke organization, uh, they might be run through a church group, they might be run, you know, there's many ways those could be run, but they're in person. Um, and like any group, they may or may not suit your needs, right? It is quite possible that any of those groups that you belong to, either on Facebook uh, or um, in person, the groups may or may not suit their needs. Now, with the online groups, you get that whole online stupidity. Uh, I live in Canada. Marijuana, for medical reasons, has been legal in this country for medical reasons, right? As prescribed by a doctor, has been legal in this country since 2002. Right? I had someone try to accuse me that I'm lying or misinformed, and then they blocked me on Facebook. Well, one, this individual lives in the States. Two, they've never been, from my judgment, um, they've never been in Canada in the healthcare system, and they do not know the Canadian laws. And all the last messages ago, oh, you're lying, I just checked. So you're going to deal with some of that online stupidity where people are going to randomly give opinions that have no validity because they have no experience living in the country you live in. Right? And they think that their experience is, is universal when it's not. Um, now, these support groups all have their advantages and disadvantages. So when it comes to uh, friends or family, right, um, they're going to be your first line of support. Right? They're going to be the ones that are be there in the day in the day out. And for friends and family that are helping someone go through the stroke, I'm going to maybe say you might want to consider going to a support group in and of yourself, right? Because it's going to be frustrating watching someone you care and love go through what they have to go through. Uh, so I'm going to suggest if you're an immediately immediate friend or family member and you're actually being there to assist someone through their journey of a stroke, right? You also need S's for support. You're going to need to possibly reach out and do something to help support you as you support that stroke assaulter, right? For, uh, you know, uh, for the clinical and rehab teams, that, that's their bread and butter. They do this day in, day out. Right? And they've got their own avenues when they need to support themselves. But when it comes to supporting the individual stroke assaulter, right, they're there to challenge you. Right? They're there to, A, one, keep you realistic, because my physiotherapist, she's brilliant at that. Um, they're there to, a, uh, a, keep you realistic, so you're not trying to overdo it, because I'm guilty of that. I'm completely guilty of that. Um, secondly, they are there to challenge you, right? to make sure that, because if, if physio is the exact same thing every single time, you're going to stop showing up, right? They're there to help you examine where your boundaries and limits are and help you get around them or get through them, right? Because you may have to learn to le live life with a few limitations, and they're going to help you figure out what that limitation is, or they're going to help you identify an obstacle and breach it and just, just blow past it, right? Um, for, you know, your speech and language pathologist, they're going to help you with your communication difficulties, with your occupational therapist, they're going to help you with, you know, what they need to do. Um, and then at that point, if you're in counseling, uh, they're going to help you work through the whole mental piece of what your stroke has kind of done to your world, because it's a bit of a shit sandwich. Let's be honest here. So, and you need to engage all of those th supports through the first three to six months of going through your stroke um, and its initial recovery rate. And that, that amount might even be longer if you're an inpatient, right? So I'm at home. And if you happen to be in a rehab hospital or 
you know, in a still actually in the hospital, like an ICU or a step down or, or whatnot, you're actually haven't made that transition from a formal hospital setting to a rehab recovery setting, right? You're going to have a lot of people around you and you're going to have a lot of support there, right? For the coworkers, right? Uh, for the people that have, are coming back to work, um, you're going to have to be a little bit patient, right? Uh, cause one, they may not be the exact same person when they come back from the stroke, uh, because there can be personality changes after a stroke, but secondly, they're going to need some accommodation, right? Uh, which might seem a bit, obtuse, um, you know, but they're going to, they're going to need some help. Um, and then, you know, part of that support thing, when you do the return to work piece is you're going to want to seek out a, uh, occupational therapist that specifically can help write a return to work plan that deals with, um, the reintegration to the workplace after a brain injury or a stroke, right? And that's just what you're going to want to do. Now, the last piece is the support groups, right? So you're going to want to try to seek out support groups around you face to face. One, it helps you find out who the stroke folk are in your neighborhood. These are the stroke folk in our neighborhood, right? So you're going to want to do that, right? Uh, a couple of reasons. One, it, it'll help with that sense of isolation. I'm not the only one around here that's had a stroke. Two, like I found out that post-stroke noise and light sensitivity, not just me. Who knew it? Right? So I found out that I'm not alone with some of my symptomology. Um, second, thirdly, it'll help you get involved with activities in your area that are meant just for the stroke folk. Um, like in my area, they have a mall walking thing on Tuesdays, I believe it is. I'm going to go check that out next week, maybe. Um... What else? Uh, now, another thing, it'll help you form friendships um, with people that might be, have the similar limitations um, or obstacles they're working through, right? So that way you, you might, you get a stroke buddy, right? Um, kind of like a thunder buddy, but with no teddy bear and a longer trip to the hospital. Um, no, Jamie, I'm not replacing you as my stroke buddy. We've already agreed that. It's a friend of mine. But I'm still your stroke buddy. You're still mine. I'm not going to cheat on you, right? Um, and there's some other things you can do um, with the face-to-face -face groups, right? It gets you it gets you socially activated, right? It gets you out of the house, right? especially if you've been basically at home a lot. And then with the online support groups, just keep in mind, there's a lot of people on the Internet they get brave because they're behind a keyboard. Um, or you're going to get people that will comment on something you've posted basically to see their own typing, right? So you are going to encounter people on these uh, support groups that will just post things that don't make any sense to the actual original posting and its line of inquiry that it's designed to start. Um, so you're going to find people that just post random shit. However, they are helpful. I've been a member of a few of these, um, like the Stroke Coffee House, Young Survivors of Stroke, um, and Stroke Talk on Facebook. Uh, that being said, right, they may be useful for you. They may not, right? Just keep in mind, they're all closed groups. You're going to have to fill out your questionnaire, and they're going to give you some insightful information, right? Because I've gotten things out of this that I had not been sure of. So when it comes to S's for support, yes, a stroke is something you're going to do alone, right? Um, and a lot of this recovery is done around people, but you feel isolated, right? Because you had the stroke. Um, and because a stroke is, an, it can be, in my case, it's very invisible that I had a stroke. You know, you may not be able to tell when I'm out in the world that I've had a stroke. But trust me, it's there. I know it. So, when it comes to leaning on support, 
finding support is not a sign of weakness. You're going to have to lean on people as you need to, when you need you, how you need to. And that's just a thing now, right? Again, leaning on someone is not a sign of weakness, right? And on that note, if you happen to be either through the throes of recovery and you're on your recovery rehab journey from your stroke, please like, share, subscribe. If you happen to know someone that's going through the, the rehab throes and recoveries of a stroke, share this with your friends, get them to subscribe, like, share, and comment as well. If there's something you want to see me cover, please message me. Uh, I've got a new email address, uh, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Uh, I even have Twitter getting an Instagram. I'll share that slowly or shortly. And then if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, e equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.